Good evening, beloveds. So I'm learning that Facebook will occasionally eat videos. Um, I do this live stream every morning around 9 a.m. and have been doing it for almost three years now. Um, I've been uploading it to my YouTube channel and um, every now and again I'll find a video that's missing. Um, most likely what has happened is that I turned off the app too soon, like closed the app or switched the app and, um, it didn't finish uploading even though I was live. So I'm just like, I don't understand how you work, but okay, Facebook, whatever. Uh, and so September 5th is one of the videos that has disappeared. Uh, and since I do have one dedicated YouTube, uh, subscriber who does watch them and, uh, arguably watches them in order. Um, I'm re-recording this video and here's where I get to tell you it's January, it's 2023. So while the date says September, you'll notice that whatever is going on, you know, it, I'm going to look and sound a little different. <laughs> so that's why, because it's January of 2023. Um, but the, it also helps me to keep the uh, videos in order as I upload them. So that's the other reason why I'm redoing it now. Um, all right. Uh, and it was probably a really good one. So let's see what I do now. Uh, like I said, September 5th, the title is A Magnificent Option. The first quote is, for, uh, for as they thinketh in their heart, so they are. And that is so are they. Proverbs 23, um, 23.7. The second quote is, thought can attract to us that which we first mentally embody. Science of Mind, page 294. Uh, we are constantly thinking, and as a result of our thinking, we are directing our life experience through the activity of the law of mind. So if we want to live happy, healthful lives, we need to pay close attention to our thoughts since the thought is neutral and will respond to whatever impress it receives, whether positive or negative. We are dealing with law, writes Ernest Holmes. Does the law of electricity care whether it electrocutes a criminal or warms a saint? We can learn to discipline ourselves to reject negative thoughts, and we can learn to turn our thinking towards the positive side of life, to beauty, truth, peace, radiant health, and all conditions which reflect the nature of a loving God. When we do so, we change our experience. In the letters of the scatter, in letters of the scattered brotherhood, an anonymous collection of spiritual writings, we are told the whole business of spiritual growth is a development of your conscious realization that thought is the beginning and end of your life, whether it be spiritual or material. We have all been given the magnificent option of choosing our thoughts. Let us choose wisely and carefully. I know I create my life experience through my thoughts. Today, I choose to think only those thoughts which make me more aware of the perfection within me, and I am blessed. Thank you, God. And that is Gene Anderson. Now, um, <sighs> thoughts are things, thoughts are things, thoughts are things. So, um, oh, it's late and I can hear my husband eating yogurt out of a glass jar in the next room. It's very noisy. My husband is very noisy. You hear him a lot in these backgrounds, especially when he's doing dishes. Um, I've heard comments about how he sounds like he's really slamming those dishes around and he's like two rooms away. Okay, that's neither here nor there. What that tells you is I'm tired. Um, so one of the things that I have talked about before uh, and after and again and again and again is about weeding your garden. Um, and we also talk about how thoughts are creative. Now, the good news is, is not all thoughts are creative. Thoughts that are wrapped in feelings are very creative. Thoughts that are just kind of drift through 
because we watch thoughts drift through our minds all the time. Those aren't necessarily creative. That's the good news. But it goes back to that, uh, that um, statement that Ernest Holmes made about electricity. Electricity doesn't care whether it electrocutes a criminal or warms a saint. And the law of mind is similar. The law of mind simply takes thoughts wrapped in feeling, because the feeling's that power packet, and says, oh, this is what you want. Let me give you that. The law does not judge. Which is one of the reasons why one of my favorite ac acronyms is SIN, self-inflicted nonsense. We are punished by our own actions. So it's a good idea to go back and take a good look at your thoughts, to look at your thought patterns. And if they seem to be trending one way, which is not where you want to go, what do you need to do to rein them back in? First thing you need to do is actually acknowledge the thoughts. Okay, this, these thoughts are a problem. Why am I thinking these? What is triggering these thoughts? Is there something in my life? Is there an event that is going on? Are there people around me? And maybe you need to shift some of that. But you do need to acknowledge that you're having these thoughts. Um... And, and, and be aware of the trends. Um, that's why I talk about weeding your garden. It's like you plant this beautiful garden with all of these wonderful and beautiful thoughts. Okay, great, fine. And you tend to them. Uh, you water them and you feed them and you make sure that they get enough sunlight and enough, you know, water, but they're not too much. And weeds are going to pop up because this is life. I mean, if you watch the news for like 15 minutes, you can have some thoughts um, that aren't necessarily beneficial to your mental health. And so and, and that so that's one of those decisions that I made. It's like I, I do want to be well informed about the weather. I know approximately when the weather comes on. And so I turn on the TV around that time and I watch the weather and then I turn it back off or change the channel. Um, so. I can catch those weeds before they drop seeds. All right. So, and when I see thoughts like this morning, I woke up grumpy, just grumpy. I suspect it may be diet related. The cold is not helping. <laughs> so, but I suspect it may be diet related. Um, and so, so those are, those are weeds that I'm, I'm making sure that they're not dropping seeds. Cause I'm like, Okay, I was really grumpy this morning. Maybe I need to watch what I eat for the next couple of days and um, make sure that I'm eating really, when I say clean, what that means for me is to watch the white refined flour products. That's what it means for me uh, because those tend to affect my mood. So, um, so there are going to be weeds. What you want to do is keep them from dropping seeds and you also want to pull them. Uh, so like I said, if you notice a trend in your thoughts and you're thinking, well, I don't, I'm not sure I like where this is going. Okay. Go back and see what's stimulating that. Is it something that you're watching? Is it something that you're reading? Is it people that you are around? Perhaps you have an anniversary coming up. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean a, a romantic relationship or even not a, you know, just a relationship, just something that has happened in your life where you've got something coming up. That could be when old patterns crop up, when old thoughts crop up. And so, um, then what do you need to do? Reaching out for help, making sure that you are surrounded by people that support the, the flowers that you're growing, not, the weeds that are cropping up, um, you know, maybe you need to take a mental health day, um, and all of the things that you would normally do outside of the responsibilities that you have. Cause like I woke up grumpy this morning, but I still had to go to work. Okay. That, that was, you know, it, it, today was not a day that I could call and say, Hey, I need to take a mental health day. Um, it just wasn't. So I, you know, got up into my responsible thing. Um, but when, when it comes to the mental health part of that, you know, I told people, Hey, this is how I'm feeling. And then I did what I needed to do to mitigate that. Um, so weed your garden, weed your garden on a regular basis. 
Notice what is growing in your garden. Catch the weeds before they get big and deeply rooted. Um, and when in doubt, call a friend or a professional. I think therapy is a wonderful thing. I think practitioners are a wonderful thing. I think good friends are a wonderful thing. So um, I don't know what Jean Anderson had in mind, but this is apparently what I'm working on today. Um, oh yeah, okay. Her title was a magnificent option. When we weed our garden and we pull out the weeds, and we focus on the flowers, because that's what she's talking about. When we remember who we are, when we remember that we are a spiritual being having a human experience, and that in the end it's going to all, it's going to be okay. When we remember who we are, and as Sandy Newkirk likes to say, whose we are. Um, when we focus on the positive. Uh, it doesn't mean that bad things don't happen. What it does mean is that we know that we'll get through them and that there are good things on the way. So the mission today, should we choose to accept it? All right, Jean Anderson. The mission today, should we choose to accept it? Is that last line we've all been given a magnificent option of choosing our thoughts let us choose wisely and carefully okay choose the thoughts that you focus on the mission today should we choose to accept it is to choose the thoughts that we focus on yes negative thoughts are gonna pop up we don't have to focus on them we may have to deal with them but we don't have to focus on them what we want to do is focus on the good as Emma likes to say Look for the good and praise it. All right. That's the mission today. Choose wisely. Choose your thoughts wisely. All right. Now, don't become spiritual bypass, uh, you know, Pollyanna, no, ne no negative vibes here. Because, you know, things happen and we have to deal with them. What it means is know that it's going to get better. Know that it's going to get better. It'll be okay in the end. Uh, and that there are people that love you, care about you, support you, and will hold your hand. All right. Okay. So that is the mission. Should we choose to accept it? The other mission is the same mission I give you every day, which is to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. Sometimes it looks like taking a deep breath before you speak. Sometimes it looks like um, taking a day off. Sometimes it looks like taking a walk. Sometimes it looks like taking a nap. I'm a big believer in naps. I love naps. Sometimes it looks like eating dessert first. Sometimes it looks like eating dessert for dinner. Sometimes it looks like eating breakfast for dinner. Um, it, when I say love, kindness, and compassion, I, I'm encouraging you to practice on yourself. And the reason being is you deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. You also are your own best test subject immediate feedback right there. Is that loving? Is that kind? Is that compassionate? It is about self-care, but it is also about joy. Um, one of the things that I'm kind of looking at this year, I say eat dessert first. And what that means is don't save the good stuff. Um, that absolutely does mean um, don't save it for a special occasion. Do it now. Do it now. All right. Um, so, Create that habit. M create that well-worn path. All right. When you practice on yourself, it makes it permanent. You create a bank. When you create a bank, you have more love, kindness, and compassion to share when you meet people that need a little extra. Um, but it also means that you are regularly connecting with the source, the center of your own being, the source of your being, the infinite source of love, kindness, and compassion. So that you'll have plenty to share. Okay. Oh, I know I'm tired. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let this go. Okay. Um, moving on. I encourage you to do something to engage your mind and your body. I encourage you to drink plenty of water. Hydration is super important. Your brain works better when it's hydrated. You can wean your, weed your garden. I do say water your garden, you know, if you're going to weed it, you should water it too. 
hydration is important. I do encourage you to get plenty of early in, or get some early in your day bright light. If we're going to talk about our thoughts as, you know, our, our mind is got a garden, it needs water and sunlight. So make sure you get some sun. Early in your day is about circadian rhythms. It's a hormone balance. Um, when, when those are a little bit more in line, uh, you'll have more energy during the day. You'll sleep better at night. It's science. You can look it up. All right. Um, and then as always in the words of Ernest Holmes, open the windows of your soul, allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us all the time because it's a state of mind. It is a state of consciousness. It is why we talk about choosing our thoughts, about choosing wisely, about focusing on the positive thoughts, about looking at the negative thoughts, acknowledging them and dealing with them. Because heaven is a state of mind. Once you learn that, you realize that you can create heaven any place and every place. It is a superpower. But we all come pre-installed with it. All right. Uh, and a good way to get there is love. But Emma also has excellent advice. Look for the good and praise it. All right. I, I'm down with I'm down with Emma always. Okay. Email. Nope. <laughs> we are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. Please feel free to go like and subscribe and share. There are YouTube channels and um Instagram pages and Facebook pages and in creative life. Uh, it's creative life spark TikTok. I'm not there yet. <laughs> not the running rev Ryan. So, um, please avail yourself of that. And if you want to know what's going on with the center, please email info at creative life.org. Um, that will get you on our constant contact and that constant contact. The info is hot. The hot links are hot. If it says click here now, it'll either take you right to the information or to the, um, person that can help you get the information. All right. I think that's what I will let do. I, mm, yes, it, it, it is getting close to bedtime. I should cut this and go. Uh, I'm going to cut this and run. <laughs> so here's where I'm going to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonderful day, an awesome day, a choose your thoughts wisely day, a Focus on the positive day. Um, a look for the good and praise it day. A magnificent day, to, to use her word. A realize that we have options day. A good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God. You are a brilliant light. You are a divine spark. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. You are a godling in whom God is well pleased and well represented. It is a state of grace. And if you don't know what grace is, please look it up. It's granted and can never be taken away. All right. Um, so uh, I should be back with you at 9 a.m. Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. Take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. And I will see you next time.